our service of morning prayer. Please would you be seated. I publish the bands of marriage between Florence Dorothy Taylor-Jones and Duncan Matthew Bennett, both of this parish, and between Jack Anthony Nivett and Daniel Yasmin Mary Justice Stewart, both of the parish of St. Peter Codford. This is the second time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. Let us keep both couples in our thoughts and prayers. Let us now stand for our worship. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God our Redeemer. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the Spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <coughs> Amen. Please sit for our first reading. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. As we work together with Christ, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patient kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet we are true, as unknown, and yet we are well known as dying and see we are alive, as punished and not yet killed, 
as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our, affect, in, in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children, open wide your hearts also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now stand to greet the Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great gale arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, 
and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Whether you are sitting here in church today or watching this service in your own home or elsewhere, I would like us all to begin this time of reflection by imagining a picture of the sea. It could be a painting of a seascape. It could be a memory of a place by the sea where you have visited, or a re recollection of being in or on the sea. I wonder how many of these scenes were frightening and how many were tranquil. The sea has a great capacity for taking us from scenes of great danger to ones of peacefulness. Those who earn their living by fishing know this only too well. The disciples in the reading we have just heard certainly did. Today's Gospel reading takes us through a great storm on the Lake of Galilee, an inland sea 13 kilometres wide and 21 kilometres long, surrounded by hills where the weather can change suddenly. The boat that the disciples were in was being overwhelmed by water and in danger of sinking. The lives of the disciples and their teacher, Jesus, look to be in grave danger. Jesus had come up with the idea of going across the lake by boat to avoid the crowds. But when the weather turned bad and the situation became critical, the disciples turned on him, saying, Teacher, acknowledging his authority over them, do you not care that we are perishing? They were clearly afraid for their lives. And then the scene is transformed by Jesus from one of mortal danger to one of peace and stillness. The wind ceased and there was, in the phrase used by the King James Version of our Bible, a great calm. The contrast between the before and after could not have been greater. I would be very interested to know which category your own images of the sea fell into, the turbulent or the tranquil, or somewhere in between. It would be an ideal conversation after the church service, but of course we can't have our coffee and teas yet. I do hope it will not be too long that we, before we are allowed to have such interactions. My own picture was of the sea at Christchurch, not far from here on the Dorset coast. A joyful yet serene picture of boats on the River Stour as it enters the sea with the medieval priory rising from the ground behind. 
The Priory and its grounds are wonderfully tranquil. If you are able to, and haven't done so already, do go and visit. Even when the sea, or life itself, is stormy, with Jesus, calm can be restored. Putting ourselves for a moment in the shoes of the disciples, they had been brought up with the Hebrew scriptures, which were full of this idea of transformation from stormy seas to peaceful ones, from turbulence to calm. Think of the prophet Jonah. Like Jesus, he was asleep on a boat in the middle of a mighty storm. And in his case, it was the captain who came up to him and said, what are you doing sound asleep? Get up, call on your God. And Jonah asked to be thrown into the sea as a penance for going against God's wishes. Once he was overboard, the sea ceased from raging. Things had been brought back into balance. The disciples would also have known the passage in the book of Daniel, chapter 7, when the prophet was terrified by the visions in his own head, images of the winds stirring up the great sea. Finally, the power of the sea beasts was taken away by a figure like a human being, a son of man who was given everlasting dominion, that all peoples should serve him. The Sea of Galilee was not just part of the disciples' experience in daily life. Its changing weather provided a metaphor for the struggles they had learnt about in their scriptures, life's violent and peaceful times its periods of difficulty and delight. The Sea of Galilee was fittingly one of the places where Christ's nature was being revealed to them. It was where they were filled with great awe as Christ transformed storms into calm. Let us now reflect on the storms and tranquility of our present times. In the case of the pandemic, the storm came very quickly. In terms of church life, things seemed reasonably normal at Christmas in 2019. But in March 2020, the Mothering Sunday service that I had prepared to lead in this church was cancelled. I will always remember taking down the posters that I had put up in various parts of Wilton to encourage families to come to the service and that Christine had helped me with, taking them down and wondering what would be coming next great clouds had appeared. So how can we approach moving from a time of peril to the great calm that Jesus brought about? I think most of us are realising that the great calm we are hoping for with the passing of the pandemic could take some time to appear. But now does feel like a period of transition. For just over a month now, we have been able within limits to have family or friends to stay. A wonderful thing for those of us who have been able to experience it. But rushing around and trying to catch up on all the things that we have missed is unlikely to bring us to inner calm. We need to live in awe of Christ and seek his peace. When a, one of the metaphorological and sometimes literal storms we are living through, which is of even greater existential 
concern than the pandemic is that of climate change and its effects on the earth and our oceans. Our task is to try to get to the great calm when the balance of the earth and the oceans is restored. It is a huge challenge, but there are small signs of hope and not far from here. Two days ago, we learned that Salisbury Cathedral, the mother church of this diocese, had become the first cathedral to be awarded eco-church gold status. I am sure we will learn more about this in the coming days and weeks. And so to us as individuals, each one of us here and at home, what God might be expecting of us is what we need to think about. I believe we need to display some of the, qual the qualities of which St. Paul speaks. Knowledge, truthful speech, and endurance. And it is this last one which I think we need to hold on to in our daily living. Be persistent, keep going. If your household has mastered recycling, how about LED lighting? If you have reduced your plastic consumption, what about changing your energy provider to a greener alternative? I found it surprisingly easy to do, having sort of put it off for a while. If you have reduced your meat consumption, what about thinking about the provenance of the fish you may be eating? Everything makes a difference to Christ. In conclusion, in our quest to move from the great storms of our time to the great calm, let us live in awe of Christ, find space to experience his peace, and revive our energies so that we can restore God's earth, its seas, and all creatures. Amen. Let us now stand to affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I believe. Please would you now sit as our choir sings Cantate Domino by Pitoni.
Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we pray for Bishop Nicholas in his final week of ministry among us, giving thanks for his leadership on environmental issues and for his passion for social justice. And we pray for him and for Helen, his wife, as they move on to a new chapter in their lives. We pray for the life of our churches here, for your life and light among us, and praying especially for all those preparing now for marriage or baptism, confirmation, or First Holy Communion in the coming weeks. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father of all, we pray for peace in your world, for stability among the nations of the Middle East, and improved relations with the West. For an easing of tensions between Israeli and Palestinian peoples. We pray for all nations as we weather the storms of a third wave of the current pandemic praying for those seeking to facilitate a speedy and just rollout of vaccinations across the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we give thanks for this, our community, our families and friends. And especially on this Father's Day, for good fathers, stepfathers, adoptive fathers, and giving thanks for all who undertake the vital role of foster parents and of mentors to the young. We pray for those of all ages who are anxious or uncertain about the future. for all who are unwell or undergoing medical treatment or therapy, for all who are restless and impatient for change. Calm them as Christ calmed the storm and give them faith in your providence and purposes for each one of us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving Father, as we keep silence before you now, hear and receive the cry of our hearts, our deepest needs and our deepest desires, and answer them as may be best for us. And so, united with the Church in every place and every age, we pray with confidence, as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.